All right, let's get it going. So our next speaker is Ewan Kitts, uh, who will be talking about running the group on existing HPC infrastructure, which is interesting because uh, I've actually spent some time on the project doing the, the other way around, you know, running sort of HPC applications on existing Hadoop infrastructure. But Ewan will be talking about something else completely. So here's Ewan. I want, I'm Ewan, I uh, work, I'm the Big Data Coordinator for HPC at Denton University, um, and I work on a project called Anything On Demand, uh, we call it HOD for short, sometimes HOD. Um, so today I'm going to talk about why we've made it, um, I'm going to go into a little uh, the shallow end, I'm not going to do any deep dives into the code or anything, but um, to show you a few things like how to um, maybe use it. And um, show you some use cases. We have some users <coughs> using this for actual research. And um, as it's past then, developer meeting, we're going to talk about a few community things, getting to see if I can get some improvement. Um, anyone, is anyone here using HPC systems? Quite a lot. And is anyone administrating them? Okay. And so using and not administrating. <laughs> All right, so um, so for the HPC administrators, this could be a, a really useful tool for you guys if you've got um, a lot of people in your organization that are <coughs> using uh, uh, HPC stuff, Bass, Romax, Quantum Espresso, blah, blah, blah. Um, but then you get a few users like us uh, who say, I really want to use Hadoop. Why don't you just build a Hadoop cluster? Because, you know, Get a new cluster maybe every year or so. Um, let's uh, let's go in that direction because everyone's doing that. And uh, so we've made anything on demand. The code is on GitHub. You can take a look. We have uh, quite a bit of documentation, which I think is uh, really good. Uh, Kenneth helped me with uh, writing that and getting the documentation so even undergrads could, uh, could follow it. Or graduate students, at least. Um, so the basic overview is to create a cluster, you're on your uh, HPC system, instead of QSub or CSub or MSub or whichever you use, you use uh, HOD create. After you've loaded the HOD module, if you're using a module system, um, you <coughs> can then, uh, once it's been created or it goes to the queue and then it spawns, uh, you can connect to it like any Hadoop cluster, and then from there you can use um, yarn, jar, job submission system. Um, if you have a very long queue and you don't want to wait around for the job to start, you can do interactive analysis, you can do hot batch, um, which it, you can use a script and it just sets it and it runs like uh, any normal um, queue sub that you would do, uh, except this time you're using you know, <coughs> Of course, if you have a bunch of uh, new clusters running at the same time, you would use uh, HOD list. Um, there's quite a few more commands, but these are the ones you probably would use every day if you're using it. So, the command line is pretty simple. You want a cluster of four nodes, HOD create, give it a label so that you can find it in the future. Um, you tell it which distribution of Hadoop you'd like to use. Uh, for instance, here we've got Cloudera. Once it's running, uh, you just connect, give it the label name that you're going to connect to. If you use Vagrant, like uh, Nicholas was talking about Vagrant, if you use that, um, it's extremely similar to just connect. Um, and then once you're running, uh, you can just run your uh, jobs. Uh, for instance, here's a basic word count. If you wanted to do the uh, batch, so for instance, if you wanted to do the 60 nodes, you just run it with um, N16 here, and that's. <coughs> give it a script and it's almost the same thing and it's uh, running on many different And you can align the arguments with the environment variables using each of the batch lists. It doesn't always use the same uh, Hadoop distribution. Uh, we also support IPython Notebook. Um, and we had a successful classroom activity uh, with some graduate students who were using uh, IPython Notebook to do their analysis. Uh, and, uh, using systems that uh, had 64 gigabyte of memory per node, so uh, to do their machine learning analysis, um, they 
they were able to do this on, um, on our system instead of having to use a laptop or use Amazon uh, or some other cloud system where they have to pay because they don't um, really want to have the funding to adapt their students to work that way. <coughs> so to get to the point of why we built this, um, you just why not just build a big data system? And by big data system here, I mean um, a lot of people conflate Hadoop cluster or Hadoop uh, stack with um, big data. Um, why not just build one of these? Or why not just go to the cloud? Um, <clears throat> and the difference here, the main difference here is, of course, that the uh, traditional HPC system is going to be uh, a whole bunch of worker nodes talking to a few um, uh, nodes of a parallel file system. So you'd have, for instance, we use GPFS, but you could be using Lustre, Panassas, um, or I'm sure there's plenty of others. Um, whereas with HTFS, one of the main insights was that if once you scale to a certain point and you've got so many nodes, you're going to start soaking your uh, bandwidth to the um, to the storage nodes, then uh, it, you're stuck, um, and you should have local storage. HDFS comes in, which for very big systems, that's uh, a really useful idea. However, um, where we fit in is within the European HPC, we are uh, covering tier two and tier one. So the way European HPC works is you've got three or four tiers of HPC. So tier three, you can think of as your desktop, your laptop, where you're running your scientific programs or codes, as people say in the HPC community say. Um, <clears throat> then your, cost, your university might have a cluster. This is what we would call Tier 2. Uh, within Flanders, we have a uh, Tier 1, which is like a national center for HPC. Uh, we have one in Ghent, um, but I think <coughs> towards the end of the year, it's uh, being deprecated in favor of one that is being built in Leuven now. Uh, and then at Tier 0, you have a few uh, machines um, at uh, uh, supercomputer centers around Europe. So there's, uh, Two in France, uh, yeah. Some in France, Italy, Spain, Germany. Um, I don't think Belgium will, will get one, but maybe in the future they will. So here's an idea of the size of the clusters we run, um, whether or not we're going to ever get thousands of nodes, as you see in the Hadoop papers or the MapReduce papers or Google is running with thousands of nodes. We've uh, before I joined, <laughs> someone had the bright idea of uh, naming the clusters after Pokemon. So, um, quite a few of them have been deprecated. We used to have Gang, Gengar, Ghastly, Hunter, uh, but these are the ones that we have running now, the tier two ones. And the, probably to me, the most important one for uh, working with big data is Fanpy, which is chosen to be an elephant because it's suitable for crossing the Hadoop. Uh, gap. Um, notably, we use 512 uh, gig per machine, and it's only 16 nodes. Um, but with this amount of memory, uh, actually a lot of problems with the I.O. interaction go away, especially if you're using IPython with a Spark backend. Um, we, we are very happy with the performance, basically, of, of what people have been using it for. Another one that we had last uh, got in last year was um, Golet, which is 64 gig per node, um, which is also uh, really useful. Um, and this year we're going to be installing Squalot, which is 128 gig per node. Not um, specifically for a high memory machine, but it's a lot of memory uh, and a lot more nodes than Fanpy, which is only the 16. We also have the Tier one, which is <coughs> and, uh, the tier two, which, or the, sorry, the tier one in Leuven, which I don't think has a, well, they didn't choose a Pokemon name because they're not, as uh, they're more serious than us. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that, this is going to be a really uh, good machine for HPC. I'm not so sure it will be suitable for running 580 nodes with Hadoop, um, but that's not what we're trying to do. And just for comparison of the nodes, in case you forgot, Swallow only has 128. Um, and, uh, and the tier ones are, you know, uh, almost 600. So, I think most 
people, well actually we have a lot of HPC people, so this might be a very useful slide. You might not be familiar with the Hadoop stack. But basically, you have your HDFS as your file system, and on top of that you have Sparkla and Yarn running, and Yarn is a job scheduler that can talk to all sorts of different um, application containers, I guess is the name. We've taken off uh, HDFS and replaced it with GPFS, and we keep Yarn as a scheduler, but it's also running on PBS, which is another job scheduler. And um, I spent a bit of time talking about the disk locality, because if you take out HDFS, um, won't that run into problems? Well, if you're running more iterative jobs over and over again, like Spark, uh, performance improvement is coming in from Spark is because once you've loaded the data in, then you can keep it in memory. Um, having all the local memory is, um, having all the local disk is less and less important. And um, I'm sure it's the case that if you uh, have an 8 or 16 uh, gigabit per second connection to your parallel file system, you could soak that really easy <coughs> with a lot of nodes if you have to get in a lot of data. However, in practice, in 2012, for instance, Cloudera came out and said, here's a report on uh, job sizes that we see. And sure, there's a lot of jobs that are um, <coughs> extremely large and would not be a good use case for our system, but uh, we probably get 80% of our jobs, well, maybe 90% of our jobs if we include <coughs> Fanpy. It's not really fair because Fanpy is a very modern machine and this is from 2012 and technology moves that quickly, but uh, these days Fanpy could fit most jobs in a single node anyway. So we really feel that this is something, well, when we were working on HD, we really felt that this is a, an approach that can be successful. As long as we understand that these limitations are uh, when we get really, really big. So um, that's why we built it, and uh, it lets us run it. Uh, it do clusters on uh, HPC. So how does that work? Uh, you're going to be as a user, you'd be on your laptop, you SSH into a login node, uh, and from there, you can submit a job to the cluster. Can you speak up a little bit? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, is it when I turn around, or just... Uh, just in general. Uh, I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, I actually feel like I'm yelling, so... <laughs> sure. So, the way HRD works is it's essentially a cluster within a cluster. So it will start the yarn cluster, the purple box, within um, the actual PBS cluster. PBS being the job scheduler. Uh, our job controller, whichever you um, And it just will take the nodes, turn it into a uh, cluster. Once you've done that, you can access web services by making an SSH tunnel. And then you can uh, set up your proxy, and then you can have access to all the web things. This is how we do the iPod the notebook, for instance. And uh, this is how if you do um, any of the web front end system to monitor your, your Hadoop uh, cluster, this is how you could do it. Um, for instance, Jabari is another thing that I haven't implemented yet on uh, HUD, but I think that would be a very useful way for people to monitor their their HOD clusters. So you might remember that when I ran uh, HOD create, I gave it a dist. And so you might say, well, what's a dist? A dist is a uh, directory which contains a hod.conf, which is like a manifest. And within that, within there, there's uh, a few other scripts, um, which are configurations. And um, so here is one for Python notebook. And we have the HOD comp, which is the manifest. And then we have these other uh, jobs, um, which will be started. And then we have a, just a utility script for the IPython number itself. The HOD comp um, lets you define some modules. So in this case, we're using is the purple or the pink on black hard to see? No, it's OK. It's okay. So for instance, here we have IPython 323. Um, this uses native. Uh, I/O stuff with the uh, Intel, and uh, it connects with Python um, 2710. Um, users can clone this uh, and just add in whatever they like. And they, if, if I'm not fast enough in getting IPython 4.1 out, which is available, but I haven't uh, provided a distribution yet, but users could just take this, replace the modules, 
Um, if it's installed on a system, they could also install it on our system using um, Easy Build, for instance, is a, a project for installing software for users. Um, you could do that, uh, and you're basically good to go. Uh, the nodemanager.com, for instance, so this is one of the services that comes up. It was inspired by systemd type comps configurations, but I, it's not the same. <laughs> I wasn't I wasn't dogmatic about it. So uh, so for instance here we do the it uses easy build, so EV root Hadoop, and then it goes to the script and just starts the node manager. Pretty simple. Uh, you can also configure the environment as it runs, and you can tell it if it's going to run on every node or just the master node or the, the various other nodes, um, and it gives it a name. Pretty straightforward, I hope. Uh, I think users can understand this as well, so if, if you're administrating a system, you can say, well, you can update it yourself if you really uh, need to. Well, what you might have noticed, uh, especially when you think about Nicholas's talk, I didn't see where he went, but um, there he is. <laughs> Uh, I haven't put in any of the Hadoop um, configuration things, so, would I, but obviously the defaults are terrible. <laughs> well, I have auto-generated config. So this is, um, links really well into Nicholas's talk if you guys were here earlier. Uh, I, I went through all the blog posts, I did some profiling, I really need to look at uh, a load job uh, and take a look at this. Uh, I <coughs> automatically generated configs now. Um, it was a bit trepidatious to put this feature in because I mean, it's an unbounded problem, and I will never get the, everything correct for every job. That's not possible. So, if you want, in the HD conf, all you have to do, instead of using XML, because I refuse to put XML in, well, at first I put in XML, but then a colleague convinced me to refuse. Um, <laughs> Well, you just do um, yarn, blah, 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 and you can give it some config overloads, and these will overload. It doesn't use, there's no, nothing complicated, it will just do a straight <coughs> replacement. Um, it, um, so if you have like one memory overloaded, you really need to look, start getting out your spreadsheet and configure all the other memory systems as well. Um, I'm going to speed up. But it, under, it understands the yarn site XML. It understands the Spark default. So if you give it Spark defaults, instead of using XML, it will use the space delimited, which is um, a detail. And it also understands log4j format. You need to control the login. So user stories. We've got a guy uh, in Ghent named Dries de Kapp. He uses um, anything on demand to profile. He profiles also on an Intel cluster and also on Amazon Web Services. Uh, in his, he's also funded by Intel. In his paper, he put in the results for the Intel Big Data Cluster that's in Britain, um, where it ran pretty reasonably well. It's comparable to Amazon. Uh, he also ran it on our system, and uh, he had he did a parameter sweep, and the fastest one, of course, he made a cherry pick. Uh, ran in half the time. That's 5,000 seconds, which is uh, it's about half the time. This is also not fair because this is 64 gigabyte of uh, memory per node, and this is FanPy, which has 512 gigabyte per node. So it's completely not fair. But uh, it's not I/O bound, and it's not losing because it's not using HDFS, <coughs> which I think is the important point. So that's a good thing. We also had uh, uh, in the soup uh, is uh, Professor Dirk van der Poel, and he had a graduate school class uh, using this 64 users. Uh, huddled around uh, five per desk because uh, we couldn't spare so many nodes uh, for the reservation and uh, so they were able to do their graduate school project for his uh, big data analysis course and uh, in the end it was uh, pretty successful. Uh, I've only got a few minutes left so I'll quickly go through the code, some limitations because I try to be honest, uh, and community. So it's Python 27, the uh, I have about 80% code coverage, which I think is pretty good since it's a really new project trying to stick HPC stuff and uh, Hadoop stuff. And we have Jenkins builds um, that uh, make sure that it keeps getting tested on the HPR. Um, limitations, it's only PBS. So anyone here using Slurm or Sun Grid Engine or Grid, Univer Grid Engine, unfortunately it's not uh, supported at the moment. Um, that's something I'm interested in having. Um, but I can't really, we use PBS exclusively, so we can't really 
I can't really implement it for you because it's not really uh, uh, useful for our time unless we can come to an arrangement. But I'm happy to uh, work with people to make sure that that can happen because that would really get penetration into uh, more HPC people, uh, sites, and then we could um, have it used more and more and more. Uh, the other limitation is that um, some of the job control is using um, Python 2 and it's not using Twisted. Um, so dealing with the asynchronous uh, jobs coming up and down is uh, based on sleeps and it's something that could be better if it was, oh, sorry. am I closer to mouth? Um, oh, sorry. Um, time's up. So <laughs> in the end, <coughs> would you like an active site? Is there anything you need? Uh, do you want to start a Madrid engine? And uh, <laughs> stuff we can talk about. And uh, so just to let you remember what I've told you, because uh, you told me what you're going to tell them, tell them and then tell them again. Uh, HD lets you run HPC, uh, Hadoop on HPC, uh, auto-generated configs um, being used for actual research, and uh, HPC can make pretty good uh, big data clusters for certain definitions of big data, and uh, yeah, please check it out. And those questions. So as Nicholas mentioned, Ohio State has a version of Hadoop that uses RDMA uh, for the fetcher. Um, <clears throat> Seagate released an open source version of Hadoop that takes the fetcher and just uses Simlink, or not Simlink, Harmonix in the file system anyway. So the fetcher didn't have to do anything, um, which is nice, but it's, they're a bit touchy. And IBM also has something for GPFS. Um, which is an adapter, and I've tested this, but it's also very flaky, so I want, and it's available as a distribution in the HD, but it no. looks like I've not answered the correct question. My question <laughs> is a little bit different. Um, and normally you have, um, need a single interface, IP interface, if you're uh, running an HTTPS client, you have only one contact point. And if you have running an Infiniband, you normally have two interfaces, Ethernet and then Infiniband. Uh, but you have only one fully qualified uh, domain name you have to bind to. So how do you solve this problem? Yes, so in the configurations, um, blah, 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 blah. let's see if I can find it again. <coughs> um, uh, so for, does uh, this one have it? Well, okay, so there's little Mac, uh, little environment variables you can use, like dollar local work there. So this is a local work in the directory for the node. Um, there's also host name and host data name. And the host data name is the ID interface, and the host name is the, <coughs> the other interface, which would be the FQDM. <coughs> so you were running Hadoop security. Well, this is the other, this is another limitation, I guess. I should have put it. The, the, our, our security model in our HPC system is based on the, you can only SSH to a client, a node, if you're running a job on that node. And we, I hope I've done it correctly, but we configured it so it only looks at the local host when, uh, so there's a port, there's, a, there's a, a mask for the server to say, only look at the local host for Sorry? You can fake the username. And then you are anyone. You can it's only if, if you are supplying a tablet. Yes. If you are secure. And then you have a problem with the principles. If you are running two different outputs and so forth. Okay, well, okay, I was under the impression that you had the IP mask set up so that it will only accept the connections from the local host. So you need to be SSH tunnel into the machine and using that proxy in order to access the web services. Like you don't run an identity. If you're using local host, then yep. yes. that's not protected. I, this is something I want to get working correctly. Um, it's been on the table for us uh, and we've been thinking about how to do it correctly. Um, so I'm happy to download your brain and find out more. <laughs> Any more questions? Yep.
you be interested in extending this to run on cloud? Um, yes and no. I think that there's a lot of um, systems that provision for clouds, so I'm not, I'm not sure that that would be terribly useful to people because that exists. And there's running into Hadoop on HPC it exists. Um, there's my Hadoop, we run Lockwood in, there's in San Diego, he's in Nurse Canal, so he's basically end of life because he's no longer supporting classroom activities using it. But, um, I, I, yeah, I'm not, I, that's, I, mean, I think it's a, a good idea, but I mean, if there's PRs coming in, that would be useful, but I, I think that if it exists probably, then um, rewriting it would be a fun project. Okay, and with that, we're out of time. Thank you again.